Hello everyone, Blaine Van here from Blaine Van Ministries. Listen, listen, listen. What is the anatomy of a breakthrough? What is the anatomy of a breakthrough? We talk about songs and there's a lot of songs talking about my breakthrough is coming. And you know, I mean, there's scriptures on it, but what does it mean to have a breakthrough, right? And a breakthrough is when you catch a divine revelation from the Lord that moves you past blockage that moves you past the point of where you were stuck at and you break through god talked about breaking in on your enemies or, or or breaking through a wall and then even matter of fact there's even scripture that talks about that you get so much energy from god that you're able to leap over the wall and run through your troops and that's the troops of the enemy so that's something like a breakthrough so what is the anatomy of a breakthrough I remember when God gave me the strategy of accumulating wealth and possession and things. And so, and it was past having money for it, but it was operating underneath the principle of God of stewardship. And when the Lord showed me that, it literally changed my life. Now, it didn't happen overnight, but the breakthrough came in a moment. And the moment was, I had... Back in the day, right, I had this old hoopie, and um, you don't know what that is. That's when you have a car that's only can drive in the city limits. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. You have a car that if you go past the, the city limits, that you know it's not to smoke and shudder and break down. But long as you drive in the city, it's good. So I had a car like that, and it had a crazy dent in it, man. And so the car that I had, somebody plowed one side, so I couldn't open it up. And so all my children. And my wife, when they got in the car, had to get in on the driver's side. It was one of those big old cars, like a Caprice Classic. And we had to climb in on the driver's side, and everybody got in. And it was a big old crazy dent, right? And so, and I was ashamed, man. And, and, and when I drove that car, I used to park it so the good side be out, amen? I try to find out where's the good side, and I, I take that dent, and I hide it, and I park it just like that. At this time... I had a friend, well, he's still a friend, and he had an old top car. I think it was a Fury. And while we was in high school, right, and even after, that boy used to clean that car and shine it up. And it got to the point that even the guys in the neighborhood that had newer cars got jealous of him because he kept his car so nice. He kept it so clean that people was envious of it even though they had newer cars. So I'm sitting there driving this car that I'm ashamed of, even though somebody gave it to me, and it's taking me around, and it's and I'm going to work in it, and helping me produce money. And I remember the Lord bringing back my friend and about how he took care of his car. And I got convicted. See, the only thing that can convict you is the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost convicted me of me not being, now here was the breakthrough, here was the revelation. A good steward and so what I mean by good steward it was that I didn't wash the car I didn't take care of the car I didn't clean the tires I didn't clean the rims I didn't clean the trunk I didn't clean the wells and you know for the doors and stuff like that you know and I'm sure it was dirty inside and I wasn't a good steward over that which God has given me and so when the Lord brought me the understanding that stewardship had to do with wealth and that stewardship had to do with that scripture that says, if you're faithful over a little, I will make you ruler over much. And so at that moment, my heart changed. And the only thing that could change your heart is God. And my heart changed towards my possessions, not in being greedy for it, but want to be found and to be found a faithful servant. So I remember I stopped washing this old beat up car, just like my friend washed his car and cleaning it. And it was hard because I was like, it's going to get dirty anyway. It's a raggedy old car. Once I get a better car, listen to my mind. Once I get a better car, I clean that. But no, you have to start where you're at. And so what I did was I started to clean the car, 
So I have to wash the car. I wasn't really good at washing the trunk then. I remember cleaning the wheels. It had a little life on it. it had a little glow on it. But here was the breakthrough because this word came from God. I took it to another notch. And the next level up was in the dit. Man, it was dirty. And when the person hit the car, that little stripe, you know, to come outside the car, that little molding popped off. So it was just a, a metal band there. And I remember taking a rag and cleaning around it. I remember because the rag used to get caught in the metal. And I remember cleaning it and washing it, even underneath the metal. And then I remember waxing the dent. <laughs> I remember waxing that big old dent in the door. And I remember the Spirit of the Lord. I'm telling you the truth, y'all. I remember the Spirit of the Lord coming on me because I knew that I had grown to obedience. And I knew that I have grown to the level that I heard God and I obeyed God. And because I obeyed God, God changed my heart and he brought me into the principles of stewardship, what would bring me to the principle of accumulation and wealth and prosperity. God did it for me when I had a broken down, raggedy, city-bound car with a, with a big dent in it. And he promised me that in my latter days shall be greater than my former days. And that one day that the latter rain will come. I'm telling you, but it started... 20, 22 years ago of me being faithful over a crazy hoopty whipped. Matter of fact, I can't even talk about it because it brought me to a place of understanding. One, what faith sounds like when it comes from God, but it also brought me to a place of understanding of taking care with that which have God has given me. And so what have God given you? My little poor friends, what have God given you, my single mom? What have God given you? You just got out of prison and got jacked, and you ain't got nothing. And God said this, let there be light. And before, and it was, and I'm telling you, even before there was light, God formed the ferment. And that was the key and the secret of revelation in that out of nothing, God produced something, and God can produce something for you out of nothing it don't, you don't need anything to start your climb to prosperity and you don't need anything man but god and the word of god and then by faith you obey what god has telling you even if it means to to wax a a a, a, a hump or something broken down and you begin to take care of that which god has given you you begin to take care of your family you begin to take care of your wife you begin to take care of your home i don't care if you rent Fix it up. I don't care if you just live in there on the, on the side and somebody just gave you the room. The purpose of understanding stewardship is God wants to bring you into rulership because kings and queens take care of their own. Hi, this is Blaine C. Van. This is Blaine Street Van Ministries. God bless you. And I hope this was a timely word for you.